Hello, friends. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I am thrilled to be here, not only because uh, I and all of my colleagues really, really appreciate the great work that, that you all do here at Glendale. Uh, like, seriously, we're, we're actually big fans of um, but also just because if I love college essence, they are super, super, super cool. And I have a lot of fun with them. And I am hoping that I can convince you that they are a full lot of fun now as well. Now, uh, before I dive too deep into as I talk, and I will dive very deep in as I talk, um, I do want to first off thank Glendale so much for having me here, uh, especially in uh, our counseling team. Uh, the students, if you have not already made best friends with your counselor, you should do that case because they are going to be the people who are in your cameras. They are the ones who are here organizing events like this. They are the ones telling your colleges exactly how awesome you are and how you have thrived in the context of your high school career. Uh, make best friends with your school counselor. Uh, if you take nothing else from this, and I'm hoping you take a lot about essays from this, actually, but definitely take that. Make best friends with your school counselor. I want to tell you a little bit before I dive too deep um, about where I come from. Um, so, I'm, so I'm a counselor at a company called CollegeWise. We've been around since 1999 when our founder, Kevin McMullen, literally drove from a student's house to a student's house in Irvine, um, sitting down at their kitchen table and helping them fill out applications and decide where to apply and what they should talk about for the races. And that was a little bit different because in 1999, there was no college in some or it was fair to read or if it did exist. And this idea of sitting down individually with students and helping them figure out what their priorities were and what stories from their lives might be really, really compelling on a college application was incredibly new. Now, since 1999, and we actually just celebrated our, our 20th anniversary, since 1999, we've helped over 25,000 students find, apply to, and get into colleges that they love and that they can afford. It's a really, really exciting place to be at a time to be working there. And just like that first student, we've continued that tradition of working with students one on one and helping them figure out their priorities and where they can best apply to meet those priorities. Now, as for me, my name is Ian Parker. Um, I am a college counselor, that's, that's my title here, and I've been with CollegeWise now for about five years. In fact, I just celebrated my fifth anniversary later, uh, back in April. I like to say that I've done most things that there are to do in education. Uh, I've been a public school teacher. Um, I've been a tutor uh, teaching the uh, SAT, ACT, and, and AP techniques uh, and helping students figure out exactly where to apply. But for the last five years, uh, I've been working at CollegeWise. I've now helped over 100 students um, identify colleges where they are going to surround You'll notice every so often that, um, that because I have a little bit of a stutter, um, I'm, I'm I'm going to occasionally look like a goldfish out of his fishbowl. If that happens, no worries. Wait a minute, I'll jump right back in. Um, and if you have any questions about the hobbits, I'm also the person for that. Not just this. I do have one more QR code for you. So we found uh, three previous seminars here. Um, and then folks have been very interested in what sort of surveys we can offer. If you are interested in that, feel free to follow this QR code uh, to book a chat with... Uh, with one of my colleagues um, who can tell you all about the services that we offer and how we might be able to help out. I'll just leave that up for about 10 more seconds. Um, currently this year, I'm working with uh, 16 fantastic seniors um, who are applying everywhere from California public institutions all the way up to Ivy League colleges and liberal arts colleges in the middle of nowhere, Ohio. And I'm sure that no one here has ever heard of, but that fit my students like a glove. So today, I'm going to lead you through a few different topics here. So first off, we're going to talk about different types of essays that you might encounter. Um, I'm going to give you examples of the most common essays that you might actually see on an application and where it's an application you might actually find them. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about tips for each of these different types of essays. Tips for the personal statement, tips for supplemental essays, and then tips for personal insight questions. Each one of them needs to be approached in a slightly different way. But I'm hoping that I can kind of navigate the pathway for you. Last, um, I'm going to tell you what colleges really want from them. So it's a really, really big seat. I'm going to say them all the way till the end. But it's very exciting. Now, before I get to the specific types of this, I want to tell you 
what my conversations with admission officers typically revolve when I talk to them about SS. And what I've actually found is that there are two different perspectives from admission officers as regards their work with essence and reading essence. The first perspective is, is the good one. It's, it's I say, this perspective is essays are my favorite part of the job. They give me the chance to get to know this student who is on this, not piece of paper. I was about to say piece of paper anymore, but that's dating myself. I get to know the student behind this digital file. Yes, we have some information about their grades and their courses and their activities, yes, but we don't have information about who they are at the crew work. And essays give me the chance to identify that information and to figure out who is this person who is actually applying to this college? How are you going to thrive? What are you going to be doing? And that act of discovery can be so exciting for admission officers. The more common, the more concrete perspective is one of those, I don't want to say despair, but certainly disappointment. So in this perspective, you'll hear how painful it is for admission counselors to have to read these essays. They're going to talk about how many great kids actually write terrible, terrible college essays. So what happens is that you have all of these students with straight A's in their most advanced English, in their most advanced English classes, and they're all talking about exactly the same. And they're writing it in exactly the same way. And they're writing it as if they were a resume. They're writing a list of their accomplishments as if that is going to impress the admission officers so much that they're going to say, yes, you are it because you are so impressive. But my friends, that is not actually the way that it works. And students who write essays like that, who do so without examining their own primaries and their own identities and what they want out of college, those are the students who are not cis. So today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how you can cis but starting with a little bit of an example. So one of my favorite quotes that I think I've ever read of all time, it comes from a guy named Kurt Mew. Um, he is currently in educational consulting like I am. Um, but in a previous year, he actually went at the University of Virginia. So if you're not familiar with, with UV yet, uh, it is a highly selective public institution uh, in Virginia. It was literally founded by Thomas Tavlison, like literally. Uh, so it is beautiful. It's green. It's got these beautiful bulk polas on all their buildings. It's fantastic. And it's really hard to get into. So, you, so your typical admitted student has something like a 4.2 GPA. Uh, their, uh, their SAT score typically ranges between 1450 and 1550. Um, and senior, uh, for their admission, for their first year of class, when they're looking at about a 19% of the brain, and it's actually lower for a car swing. For Hardenstein students. So it's a really, really tough place to get into. And you have really accomplished students applying, students who have taken AP Wag and AP Lit and IB Everett, right? And they're in the most advanced English courses that they could be in. They're fantastic runnings. And what he actually found out was that literally 90% of the essays that they would get at using Impulse were what he called MIC essays. In that they are technically correct, they, are, they, they have correct spelling and grammar. They are using emotionally correctly, but they are all the same as each other. And just as if you go to a McDonald's in Denver or a McDonald's in Dallas or a McDonald's here in Glendale, you are going to get the exact same Big Mac. That's what these essays were. And what he found was that so many of these compass students were writing essays that were not that great. And then other students, even not that great students, even students who maybe were getting B's and C's in their English class, if they were digging deep, and identify what really made them special and a story that really stood out to them, they were writing really good essays. You actually do not need to be a great student to write a good college essay. And in fact, if you are writing an essay the same way that you teach in your English class, it might even hurt you. Now, I like activities, I like participation. I want to run a reason experiment here. Uh, I really like this. Um, so what I'm going to have you all do is um, I'm going to have you listen to three little pieces of essays. And I want you to decide not which one you are admitting to college, but I want you to decide which one you would like to read when in the story here. Who do you want to be your roommate? 
So let me tell you a little bit about these three folks. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just read off of this because, believe it or not, I cannot memorize the entire essay right off. I'm going to start here with Tony. Tony says, during my sophomore year, I was fortunate enough to be elected as treasurer of student government. It was a great honor given that I ran against two other very qualified students. I was nervous at first about taking the job, but I was confident that my organizational skills could be put to good use to maintain accurate records to account for incoming and outgoing funds. My experience turned out to be much more valuable than I expected. In fact, my time as a student body treasurer helped me appreciate just how rewarding it can be to work as a member of a team. And I realized that I have many qualities that make me a true leader. That's Tony. I have two more. This is from Lisa's. I first became interested in volunteering when my mother informed me of an opportunity to volunteer at the senior center where my grandmother lives. They were hosting a Mother's Day breakfast and were looking for volunteers to assist with the preparation of food, serving, and cleaning. I was apprehensive to come in due to my rigorous course schedule and numerous activities. However, I knew that my grandmother was looking forward to seeing me, and I didn't want to disappoint her. I personally believe that nothing is more important than me. When that Saturday came, I was at the senior center at 7 in the morning and went until 11 a.m. Looking back, it was one of the most rewarding experiences I had have participated in. So at least. And last, I want to tell you about Nanny. And remember, we're voting on who we want to be on roommates freshman year in college. Daniel says, I make the world's worst chocolate chip pancakes. Seriously, I really do. My mom loves homemade pancakes, so I tried to surprise with a batch for breakfast on her birthday last year. What a disaster. I thought I followed the directions perfectly, but for some reason, all the pancakes had a be raw dough in they were disgusting. I threw them away. <laughs> and I offered to take her out to breakfast. It's a good thing that Gus's deli doesn't serve breakfast, or I probably would have been fired from my part-time job there a long time ago. I'm terrible with pancakes, but I can make the best corned beef on rye you've ever tasted. Now, folks, we've been running this particular survey since about, ooh, I want to say 2005, so long, long predated my experience here. Um, and there's one student that always wins, but before we get to that, I'm going to ask you, who would you vote to be your roommate? Can you please raise your hand if you would vote to room with um, Tony, who's the treasurer of student government? Okay. We got one. Excellent. Thank you for your bravery, too. Two people. Excellent. We have company here. Fantastic. Thank you. How about Lisa, who volunteered at her grandmother's um, community? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and little 12. 14, yeah, people tend to like this. So we've got 15 or so people for Lisa, I like. Last, Daniel. He's terrible at making pancakes. Shut it up to pop her out, guys. And that's about to have the audience. Um, I'm not going to count that up, but it's more than 15. Uh, folks, Daniel has won with about, I'm going to say, 60% of the votes or so. Um, and see, I got to say, this is not actually that surprising. Because in every contest we've ever run since, I think, the year 2005, Daniel has literally won it every single time. He is the Kim Jong-un of the past that Now, there's a reason that Daniel wins every single time. Um, Tony seems very impressive. He seems really good with numbers, right? Lisa, that's great. She would hang out with her grandmother for one Saturday morning. Fantastic. She seems like a really nice person. She seems like she really likes her family. Daniel seems kind of fun, though, huh? Yeah, yeah. Daniel seems fun. And the secret here is that when a college admission officer is reading your essay, they're not just reading in for, are you going to be the best student here? Are you going to get all A's? Uh, are you going to, uh, com to come out of your Nobel Prize winnings? Well, I guess if they came out of college Nobel Prize winning research, they would want to with you. Instead, what they're looking for is are you going to add to our community? How are you going to add to our community? And believe it or not, this is a real question that real admission officers are asking themselves as they read these answers. Is your roommate going to like you? That is a real life question that they are asking themselves. So that can tell us a lot about what makes a really great college essay. Now I'm going to run through a few different types, kind of give you a little bit of idea of the context, what's possible out there. So I'm going to go over three types of SBS code. First off is the PIQs. Um, these are the personal insight questions. And see, I always shorten to PIQs in my mind, and no one ever understands what I'm talking about. So the personal insight questions are the essays that are asked by the University of California assist. Uh, there are a total of eight possibilities for your PIQs. Uh, but you do not have to do all eight. In fact, there is no way for you to do all eight. Instead, you choose any four of those responses that you would like. 
those responses range all over the place from how have you shown leadership, um, what academic subject particularly intrigues you, how have you improved your school or your community, what challenges have you overcome, what educational opportunities have you had. Basically, there's something in there for everybody. Um, you see, could not care less which particular PIQs you answer, but they do want you to answer before it can mostly fit you. And there's also the personal statement. So the personal statement seems to be probably the most well-known here, I think. Um, in fact, the personal statement is so well-known that it's often called the main essay, right? The personal statement is that essay is going to be on the top of them. Uh, there are a total of seven different options. In fact, I'm going to go over some of them and just go with it. Um, but there's a lot of freedom. Um, the personal statement will likely be one of the longer essays that you write for any of your colleges. It's 650 words, um, and successful common app personal statements tend to be close to that limit. They tend to be a little bit longer. And the common app personal statement tends to be a little bit more narrative and a little bit more creative. It's a chance for you to have fun and tell your story and engage with your own identity, your own priorities, your own thought processes, and who you might be the most. And last, there are these other essays, and this is kind of a grab bag of stuff that we just call the supplemental essays. Supplemental essays just refers to any other essay than college is asking. So, for instance, USC asks um, why you're applying to that major and why you apply to that major at USC. Um, Occidental asks, um, uh, what's your quirk? We're all quirky here. What's your quirk? So, different. Colleges are going to have very different supplemental essays depending on exactly what they're looking for from their applicants, what, the, what, uh, what questions they want folks to be able to answer there. And it's very likely that if you apply to Oxygen, um, that you have some sort of work you are weird in some sort of amazing way. I'm going to start here with the con. So I'm going to start by running through uh, a couple of the options that you can tap as a common app personal statement. There's lots of options, as I mentioned before. Um, here are two of my favorites. And actually, when I'm brainstorming common app personal statements with students, I'm going to often show them all the different possibilities just to get their mind moving. There's actually really great prompts in, in the common app that students can kind of glom onto and say, oh, that, that gives me a really, really great idea. I'm going to do a great job asking these particular parts. I'm going to kind of go through a so first, students can identify a particular triumph or a big or an accomplishment or a challenge that they overcame, or if they have something that they need to explain from their background. Uh, this is a really, really great opportunity to do it. Um, the lessons, the lessons we take from obstacles, um, challenges we've overcome, accomplishments we've achieved. That's what this uh, prompt is going to be asked about, and it can be a really fun one for students to answer. Uh, especially if there's, if there's something in their background that they feel that, that colleges should know about them. Uh, for instance, I had a student last year talk about um, how her parents had divorced in 10th grade um, and how that really affected her grades that year before she bounced back a lot of. Students can also talk about curiosity. So for this one, this just tends to be a really fun one. Um, one of my favorite brainstorming questions for students is just, what could you talk about in story hours? What could you talk about without any time being interrupting you? You could you just go on and on and on and on about. For me, it's all things J.R.R. Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings, as a lot of you heard as you we were setting up. Um, but for another one of my students, and uh, this was two years ago, I was working with a student named Air who was based out of, out of uh, Eugene Wood. Um, and he was really into astronomy, and he told me that he could talk to me for hours about telescopes. And so his personal statement ended up being about building a radio telescope with his friends because he knew that with a normal visual light telescope, he wouldn't be able to see the giant black hole at the center of our galaxy. And he wanted to try to figure out whether he could see it through a radio telescope and the data that he collected from that. He ended up not, not seeing uh, the, the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way. It's called Sagittarius A star. Uh, and he wrote about that a little bit in his personal statement. But he did end up see Jupiter through his radio telescope. And that story about engaging with his curiosity was so much fun for us to talk about in Alvin Wood. There's also stories about person and race. If I, if I can move to my next set of notes, there we go. Um, sometimes students really just want to talk about what makes them. So... 
three years ago, I had a student named Jasmine, uh, who was from Irvine, California. Uh, and she loved history. And specifically, as soon as she found out about a court case that was entitled uh, Westminster v. Mendens, or rather Memphis v. Westminster, I guess it is, uh, like she, she knew that she had to learn more about that court case and what happened and engage with the family. So, so in case you don't know, Mendes v. Westminster is a seminal court case from 1947. Um, that essentially outlawed public school segregation in the state of California. And it dates from a time when students of Hispanic descent were sent to a different school than students who came from white families. And so a family named with Mendez was decided to challenge this. And in 1947, the California Supreme Court declared that no school district in California could segregate. And what did Jasmine do with this? Well, she engaged with that because she was so curious because it, um, because she knew that she was growing as a person by learning about this case. The point where she actually partnered with Sylvia Mendes, the little girl uh, who, was, uh, who was at issue with this case, on a series of speaking events before the OC Department of Education. It was the coolest thing. And so, of course, it was a perfect topic for her to talk about how she grew through learning this history and through her partnerships. And that's an example of what you can talk about on the personal state. It does not need to be as, uh, not as engaging or as, or as incredible as, as that partnership, but you can talk about how you move through as a person. You can also just talk about you. So many students actually see themselves part of something large, a community, a creep, an identity that shapes actually who they are and who they are going to be. I think this one can be a really hard topic to engage with, but students who do it right can really reveal a spreadable amount of outcomes. This year, I'm working with a student, uh, Meda Hadisha, um, who uh, is of Bengali descent. Um, and her personal statement is going to be all about her Bengali identity uh, and, the, and, and the challenges that her family went through during India's partition and then the subsequent civil war between West and East Pakistan. Um, and how she grew to engage with that identity, ironically, through uh, <laughs> through topics brought up in the show with the band and the It could be a really, really smart. But, and I think, I think we all know where this is from, right? Or maybe given this young audience, maybe we don't. Are we familiar with the movie Braveheart? Okay, so what's the most famous line from that movie? Can anybody shout it out? <laughs> I think you know it. Freedom! Right? Uh, uh, Mel Gibson just, just shouting freedom as he's leading the Scottish Army against the English. It's incredible. This is actually one of my favorite movies. Um, the reason that I got that picture up there now is because the Common Personal Statement actually allows so much freedom. Embodied in, in its embrace of prompt number saying, which I am not afraid to admit to you. Um, after having uh, the council for more than five years, and elect with triple digits number of students to send them to college. This is the only one that I know by heart, prompt number seven. And the reason I know it by heart is because it's so flexible and so valuable, it goes something like this. Write an essay on a topic of your choice. My only rules here, you count a bit to any point, and it needs to be about me. <laughs> but beyond that, it could be about so many things. I have a few tips here. So first off, uh, we learned earlier, we should not try to impress admission officers. All right? If you try to impress admission officers, you end up just sounding like every single other person who is writing that. Make sure that as you write, you are owning your story. There are some, uh, some essay topics that I think uh, we consider to be cliche. All right? The, the, um, the sports story, the... Um, how I broke my shin story, um, the it's, um, I traveled to a foreign country story, the uh, uh, a community service story, right? We, we consider all these to be kind of interesting. I don't believe that there are cliche essay, cliche essay topics. I believe that there are only cliche essays. And cliche essays are the ones where their author has not bothered to own that story. So this is a little college-wise phrase we use a lot of time. How do you own your story? You own your story when you provide the details to that story such that no one else could write that same story. If you can paint a picture of where you are, who's saying what, how you felt 
when you were smelling, uh, how you were sitting, how amazing the speaker was that night. <laughs> the, 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 the more details you debate, the better your essay will be and the more you will stand out from everyone else. And yes, you can write about leadership on the soccer team as long as you have details to back it up, as long as you own that story. Next, I'd like to say that the application is a valuable, valuable real estate. You do not want to repeat information from, from, from your activity list to your essay or from your, uh, your resume to your essay if you are submitting a resume. You want to make sure that your essay elaborates on some detail of your experience that is not contained elsewhere in the story. Now, it's okay if you have water polo in your activities list and you also are writing your essay about water polo. That is totally all wrong. However, when you write your essay, you should be focusing on the same things that you are in your activities list, where you're talking about your accomplishments, your, your uh, um, uh, the records that you broke, your particular role on the team, right? Instead, you should be shifting gears to, to bring up details that, that are not contained in that activity list. The application is super valuable for real estate, and you want to make sure that you are using it to its fullest extent. And finally, and I find that this is increasingly a problem in the age of artificial intelligence, college admission officers are expecting to be receiving essays from 17 and 18 they are not expecting to receive essays from 43-year-old accountants. However, I have found that many essays, especially these days, sound like they are coming from 43-year-old accountants. Now, oftentimes I don't know exactly why that is. It might be that these students are using thesauruses to punch <laughs> It might be that a parent got an essay and rewrote some portions of it to sound a little bit more professional. I'm looking at you parents. Um, it might be because they used a large language model like ChatGPT or uh, or Groft or or my personal favorite because I actually do use this for my jumps on um, uh, um, small bugs, right? The problem here is that when you sound like a forty-three-year-old accountant, you know, when you sound like ChatGPT or Rock or Slug, as it doesn't really sound like it's coming from a seventeen-year-old. It doesn't really sound like it's from a student who has lived the life of a high school. It doesn't really sound like someone who is going to go on to a college and learn and thrive and grow and change and, importantly, be interested. Folks, 17-year-olds and 18-year-olds are interesting. 43-year-old accountants and even college counselors are not that interesting. So if you're using large language models, A on parents, sourcing, make sure to use them. Maybe only a little. I'm actually okay with, for instance, chat GPT helping you with an online or helping you to bridge two paragraphs. As long as you are not taking that work and then play because and work. Because once you take that work and claim it as your own, I'm going to even bully the topic of academic dishonesty or fraud or anything else like that. I don't care about that right now. It makes a bad essay. It makes a bad essay. So, let me tell you a little about some overused essay stories, how one might improve them slightly. I told you that there are no cliche essay topics. There are just cliche essays. Here are some that, that tend to be very cliche. And because, because students are not providing the details, they're not moving the story, they're not claiming that story for their own and make sure no one else could write that say in the story. Sports talk the importance of teamwork, committing it to my notes. Yes, that is incredibly cliche. Now, the problem here, this pretty much sounds like what life is for every single act. Literally everybody else on that same team could write that same essay. But the solution here, if you find a story about athletics that you actually own, provide those details. For the second one, my trip to another country broadened my horizon. So that essentially tells us that you are a tourist. Great. Um, but we know that other places are different. Um, the solution here, make it about yourself, not where you're traveling to not the community or, or the organization, but make it about yourself. What did you learn there? How did you grow? Who did you engage with? Community service, talking the importance of helping people. It's, it's shocking how often I see this and how often I'm like, oh, you didn't know you should help people before? <laughs> um, you want to make sure that as you're going through, you are, you are giving some, some of those details. You are owning that story. And importantly, when students write about community service, I want to make sure that 
they weren't just doing it alone, but they were actually helping somebody and introducing us to those people that they helped. That's what makes a community SIN pick so much better. And then last, my leadership position proves that I can work well with others or that I work hard or that I take initiatives. Well, great. But give us the details that actually show that. Instead of saying that you work hard, show us you're working hard. Instead of saying that you took initiative, show us what that initiative was. What was the idea that you alone had? How did you bring it to the attention of, of everyone else? How do you problem solve? What does, it, what does your brain do when it's working hard? I want to see how you think. And again, these all go back to details, owning that story, claiming that for yourself. Okay, to supplemental essays here. So, supplemental essays, there is no way to bring them all into, into, into one particular criteria, one particular bucket, because there are so many and they are so good. So, I'm going to give you some of the really, really common buckets of supplemental essays. So, I'm going to start with um, one of Michigan's longer essays. So, this is a 550 word monster that I've been brainstorming with students over the last couple of days. So, I'm very familiar with this one, right? And it goes something like this, describe the unique qualities that attract you to the specific undergraduate college or school to which you are applying at the University of Michigan. This is essentially a why ask. Why are you applying to Michigan? And importantly, why are you applying in a specific college? And students who have actually engaged with, with their priorities for applying to college and why they're applying to college in general actually usually do a really good job answering this question because they can then pivot some these are my prior wings. This is what I was thinking about when I was choosing my college list. Two, here's how the University of Michigan satisfies those priorities. And here's exactly how I'm going to navigate those. My rule here is if you write me a why of us something, and I can envision what you're going to be doing on a random Tuesday night in February of 2025 in Ann Arbor, then you've written a pretty good why us us. I want to see how you're going to engage your into I want to see what you're going to learn. I want to see what class you're inside of. I want to see what kind of research you want to do and what clubs you want to join and which professors you're going to work with. So the more specific you can be and the more you can engage with those priorities, the better you're going to do on that question. There's another one in here. I'm going to take on Yale a little bit. So this one goes like this. Tell us about a topic or idea that excites you and is related to one or more academic areas you selected above. Why are you drawn to them? Is essentially a why major, why program and say. And much as with the why this college answer, I'm really looking for details from your own priorities and your own life. If you have selected biology as your major of choice, great. Why are you interested in biology? What got you hooked on biology at first? What makes you excited? What makes you curious about this? What kinds of problems do you want to solve within the field of biology? What do you want to discover? And importantly, how at Yale are you going to be able to make those discoveries? What are, which of our resources are you going to be able to use here? And please chug your brain ask through this major a little bit for us. Tell us what you're going to be doing. Because so many of these why us and why major instances say things like, Yale is number three in the nation in terms of the quality of against labs. Um, and it's incredibly boring. And it's all the things that admission officers have already known. And it doesn't really describe why you, yes, you, you and you and you and you are a sit there. And really great supplemental essays honestly are not about the college at all. They're about the student right listening. The last brief type of supplemental essay that I want to go over here is the community essay. I think that Northwestern actually has a really, really great example here. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, what aspects of your background, identity, school, community, and or household settings have most shaped how you see yourself engaging in Northwestern's community, be it academically, extracurricularly, culturally, politically, socially, or otherwise? And this is really asking not just about your own identity, your own community, and how that has shaped you and how you fit in there, but also how you're moving to settings and that to college. And the reason that I like Northwestern's wording of that is that, is that it's very explicit about it. It doesn't just ask, tell us about a community, like, for instance, the University of Washington or the University of Michigan has. Instead, it makes that explicit connection between, tell us about a community that has shaped you and how you have shaped that community, to, now, how are you going to extend that to Northwestern? Okay. And that's what really effective supplemental essays are. They start with the person writing, and they pivot it to what's going to happen then at that college. How are you now going to fit into Northwestern? 
and this doesn't need to be long. This does not need to be a whole essay about the Northwestern community, but we should get some idea of how are you going to fit in and how are you going to thrive here? How are you going to be an essential part of our communities for the four years that you are in? But some of essays really give that opportunity for you to craft your responses directly to confidence and say, I want to go here because in a way that is unique to you. So I do have a few tips here. Uh, first off, I am constantly shocked by how many students don't quite read the entire um, question as they're doing supplemental essays. I mentioned um, USC's Y major before. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty simple um, Y major essay, but some of these students missed the second part of that, <laughs> where they go on to say, and why at USC, All right? Because it's actually a two-part question. Make sure to read all the way to the end when you are going through these supplemental essays, and make sure to address everything that they are bringing up in that question, because there's a reason that they're using valuable space on the application to ask these questions. They really want to know the answers to everything that they put within that topic. Second, remember it is any of No matter what the topic is, whether it's a why us, whether it's a why this major, whether it's a tell us about, tell us about uh, the, the clubs and organizations you might join here, those all sound like it's about the college. And I, and I would venture to say that more than half of my college essays, at least for selective colleges, talk about something like their ranking or the average GPA or the um, student to faculty um, ratio, right? And don't actually get to who is the student who is applying. And the more you can talk about you and your fit and how you're going to use those resources, the more successful that essay is actually going to be. Next, do your research. None of this is useful unless you actually advocate for that particular campus. So you want to make sure that if you are talking about um, your Bengali community, uh, like by uh, the students at Isha, uh, or if you are talking about um, your engagement with history and your love for the Civil War, that you are then talking about uh, the opportunities at that college that are going to allow you to live that identity. Is there a uh, South Asian interest is there a Civil War reenact society? There's a reason that you're applying to this particular college. And ideally, it's not just because it's well-known or because it's ranked highly or because it's next door to your house. And that reason should have to do with what's possible. So make sure to do your research, discover what's actually possible, what kinds of resources are there, and you'll do really well on a type of question. And last, make sure to plan carefully. You not want to repeat your your, your information from elsewhere in the application or cover the same information between two different essays for the same college. But also, for many supplemental essays, it's very possible to reuse much of the information that you are talking about. Um, for instance, I brought up the University of Michigan and the University of Washington and Lafayette. Both of them have a 300-word essay on community. I encourage my students to use the exact same essay for both colleges. So if you plan very carefully and say, oh, I can reuse this for this other college, then you're going to save yourself a lot of blood. That's my last piece of advice, supplemental essays. Because now I want to talk about how fun they can be. So um, I have some examples of supplemental essays that I particularly like. Um, Stanford um, asks, what historical event would you go back to and see? Um, and there's some really, really fun responses from some of my students. Um, of course, some of my students would go back to the Civil War, which I personally would not want to go back to. Um, some of my students would go back to, uh, uh, to, to, to the jazz era in the 1920s. Some of my students would go back to, uh, uh, to the, the, the collapse of the Queen Air and the Abyss Fall of the Marine Wall. It's really, really, really fascinating, especially if you like history. Uh, Pomona, that's a strange question about the number 47 that actually has a lot to do with Pomona history. I encourage you to look up the context and be kind that question also. Um, Chicago is well known for for their streamed responses. Um, they will ask you to um, a song title or a lyric, a question from it, and then to try to answer that song title or lyric. The University of Chicago is also the place that brought in essay questions such as "Where's Waldo?" and "Is a hot dog a end? Those are the, I'm not joking. Those are real live essay questions from the University of Chicago. So there's some fun ones, there's some weird ones. You can have a lot of fun with those supplemental questions. Now, I'd love to talk about probably the 
probably the thing that brought everybody in this auditorium tonight. And tell us about the PIQs, Ian. Tell us about the UCs. So I mentioned that there are being possible personal inside questions. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but suffice it to say that, um, that there are questions for every single person in the audience, ranging from leadership to service to, uh, to academic engagement to, fate, to, uh, to um, ways in which you are creative and a problem solver. It can be really fun to identify which particular questions to answer. And honestly, that's one of my favorite things to do with my students is figure out, okay, great, which, which four things most apply to you? Which ones are you going to have the most on answering and be able to provide, provide the most intent to work? Um, the personal insight questions um, really can be seen as sort of written interviews. Um, I go to the UC Consource Conference every single year, and most folks probably don't know this, but every single year there is a seminar um, at the UC Consource Conference that is literally just entitled uh, UC Personal Insight Questions. Value adds and missed opportunities. I think it's been going for six years straight or so. <laughs> and every single time, in the very first videos that you see admission counselors talk about when they're talking about missed opportunities, is they say, we wish students would just answer the question. Just answer the question. Yes, because the PIQs are very different from the University of Michigan's YS with their 550 words or the personal statements, uh, 650 word Linda right? Your personal insight question is 350 words for each one. So for context, that's about a third to a half take. It's pretty short. So for UCPIQs, you really wanna jump right in and just as if you were answering a job interview question, you really want to just get right to the point um, if you were answering PIQ number one about leadership, you want to get it to how'd you show the action? Paint a picture for us. Describe the details here. And importantly, make sure to point out very explicitly where that leadership was. What gap did you still fill as you were, um, uh, as you were exercising this leadership, as you were being a leader? So I can be direct at these uh, things. Um, and be, you see personal insight questions are not the opportunity for hooks, for a huge amount of creativity, for more, um, for quotes from Webster's Dictionary, uh, which I really hope that no one's using in any of my Um But it's just not the space for any of that, because you want to jump right in and really answer that question, as you see official officers are begging all of us to. Next, examples, examples, examples. Um, just because PIQs are shorter than some of your other essays, does not mean that you get to not know that story. The reason that I want students to get right to the point, the reason that I want students to be really succinct and answered directly is because I want them to have the space to actually provide those exams. Everything you say, you need to back up within that PICO. You need to give those details, you need to take that picture. And the last, I find that PIQs can be very easy for some students because they're very direct, but very difficult for others because sometimes it feels like you're bragging. And that's okay. We live in a culture where we don't brag very much or, when, or rather where we are encouraged not to brag very much. On the UCPIQ, it is okay to say, I did this, this thing would not have happened except for me. And here's how I came up with that idea. And that feels very uncomfortable for very many students, but it's also something that you have to do in order to succeed in there. So I mentioned that in that, that, uh, that session in the UC Counselors Conference is entitled Value Ads and Missed Opportunities. I stole their title for this. Um, <laughs> the most important thing here before, before I get into a couple of the, a couple of the value ads and missed opportunities is, as I mentioned at the beginning, talk to your counselors. They're going to be your favorite people so I was seeing for identifying, hey, is this a really good way to approach this essay? Hey, I was thinking about this particular topic. Do you think that's appropriate? And they might be able to give you some really, really great advice and personalized to you because they have that information. But some of those value units are students who focus on themselves rather than someone else. So often, um, students can write a PIQ about their grandmother and their relationship with their grandmother. And that essay ends, and then that essay ends up being about their grandmother. Well, the University of California, while they recognize that your grandmother is likely an amazing human being, also does not really work to do with daughter. They want to know about you. 
So make sure that every single key IQ that you are answering, you are essentially yourself and you're in it like this. You can have guest stars. Your grandmother can be the guest star in that PIQ essay. She should not be the main character. The main character should be you and how you grew and how you learned and how you changed. Make sure to provide very specific examples as you are going through. I mentioned that everything you say, you need to back up with examples. That's great advice for every essay, but especially for those personal insight questions. And the last, make sure to draw connections from your past to who you are today. Now, Shakespeare play this has uh, five acts. It was, it, was, it, was, it was one of their great innovations in the 1500s, right? They had this it's a multi-arc play where we have all the rise and conflict and fall, right? Good essays do that same thing. They draw a change between two different periods of your life. So every PIQ that students do, I want to understand, how did you grow from this? How are you different today? How have you changed? And importantly, if students answer that question, then I can actually draw a line from then as a rising senior or a current senior to who they're going to be in college and maybe how they're going to continue to change during college. And that's something that admission officers are also going to be trying to do. They're not trying to figure out exactly who you are today as a, as a, as a, um, as a person who is staying the same. Instead, they're going to try to figure out not who you are right now, but who you're going to be when you're a sophomore or a junior or a senior at that this. Some missed opportunities here. Some students tend to focus a little bit more on structure than on content. Um, I love English teachers. I love writing essays. Um, I'm not particularly creative, but I appreciate those who are. The PIQ is not the space for an English and as an essay that would get an A's in your English teacher might not succeed for for a UC personal insight question because it's going to waste some of that space on amazing creativity, the creativity that you don't necessarily need in this particular response. Uh, students who center others' experience rather than their own, right? You want to make sure that not just you don't have other people be the main character in your essay, but also you're not centering historical narratives or, or things that are happening to other people and that you're being assigned to observe with us. You want to mention how you are getting involved, how you are changing. In the last dialogue, folks, other creative things, you want to make sure that you mostly leave those out and that you are just addressing the question. I mentioned at the beginning that uh, I would try to answer the singular question that colleges are asking themselves, what they really want students, what they really want to find out from students. And I mentioned there was a big secret. I'm actually hoping that as I've gone through that you've kind of figured out that secret a little bit. So I have a couple examples here from Harvard, from, uh, from statements from uh, from the UC system about kind of exactly what they're looking for from their students. And another one that I actually have space to put on here, but that I really like, MIT actually has a question that goes, we understand that you do many things just because they are required to do you. What do you do just for the play? And I really like that question. I think it sums up a lot of what I've been talking about today. Because colleges just want to find out about you. They want to get to know you. And as I say, they're not flexible for students to brag about their accomplishments and run through their resume and describe every supposedly, uh, every supposedly impressive thing they've ever done. And in fact, that can lead to bad mistakes. Instead, st students who succeed show colleges who they are and how they've grown and who they are growing to be, the things that interest them and how they're going to impact the people around them. And it sounds like a lot. But if you tell colleges stories that are unique to you and true to you and stories that you care about, colleges will actually be able to answer every single one of those questions. So we have seen stats up on the screen. I'm not going to go through the stats. I actually don't really care about these things. Um, I don't really pay any attention to those particular numbers because they don't really show the individual impact that I get to have every day with my students from sitting down with them, from building relationships from finding out what their priorities are, finding out what's important, who they actually are at heart, who their identity is, right? Because that's going to be so important to college applications. Um, I help both like constantly and happy. That's something that I'm really, really happy that I get to do every single day, even when it gets really busy here in August and September and October, as I'm sure that our school counselors can tell you about. Um, now, I have one big assignment for everybody in this audience. 
I mentioned that so much of writing a great essay is about knowing who you are and knowing what's important to you. When you get out of the seminar and go back home, I want you to grab a piece of paper and I want you to write now what your priorities for college are. And I don't want you to think about a particular college. And I don't want you to think about what do colleges want me to think about. And I don't want you to think about what do colleges want me to think about what colleges are thinking about. I want you to think about what your priorities are and what you are looking for in the next four years of your life after you were joining the school. Just write them down and they can meet. Right? And once you do that, that is going to be incredibly important to essays that you're going to write for literally any college. Write down what's important to you and then use that information in your insights. Once you do that, you are an asset there. So, I mentioned before um, that we have a brief uh, survey here. Um, sorry, not a brief survey. This is the uh, this is the fan sale for if you want to sign up for a you know, for a chat with uh, some of my colleagues. They can tell you a little bit about some of our services uh, and how we help students over time. Uh, so feel free to pull out your song and if you'd like, you can go ahead and follow this QR code. I don't need you to. This is an optional thing. I'm happy to just be here talking about SIS because I'm a big nerd and I love talking about that stuff. Now, importantly, I would love for us to take a look at this post-seminar survey because this is actually going to be the important one. I'm hoping that this week works. We want these people. Yeah. All right. I'm very proud of myself. Even though I didn't create this, I'm very proud. Yeah, we have one more team week. So uh, we are almost at time. We've got five minutes to go before 7.30. I'm not just going to hang out for a little bit, but we have about five more minutes before the hour is technically up. I was wondering if anybody had any general questions about SNS. Now, I can't answer things that are very specific to individual students, uh, but I'm happy to just see what's in the air. Does anybody have any particular questions for me? Yeah, first. Yeah. 